Kamala Harris was interviewed by the Black Journalist Association, uh, or whatever it's called. This is the same group that Trump infamously sat down with. And we remember how that went. We remember how they got, uh, how they, how they treated Trump. So let's compare that to the kinds of questions that Kamala got from these journalists. And this first question is, uh, is about her joy. Kamala Harris is a very joyful person. And and let's hear that. Why is joy important to you to insert into this election? And what do you make of of Republicans using that as a way to suggest that you're not a serious candidate? Well, sometimes I think, and I'll say to whoever the young people are who are watching this, there are some times when your adversaries will try and turn your strength into a weakness. Don't you let them. Don't you let them. I find joy in the American people. I find joy in optimism. I, just, I find her so difficult to listen to. Her, her just, she's so fake, so phony. I find joy in the American people. Oh, shut up. And these journalists, total hacks, obviously, but this was shocking even by their standards. Madam Vice President, why are you so joyful and wonderful? I've noticed that you're full of joy and your opponent, meanwhile, is Hitler. Care to comment? What are your thoughts on that? Where is this joy, by the way? What joy are they talking about? We're constantly hearing from the left about all their joy and how much joy they have. And there's so, where is it? We never see it. Where's the evidence of this joy? What joy are you talking about? Uh, I, I, I don't see that. I mean, what, what I see from you is relentless demonization of your ideological enemies, um, constant self victimization. Uh, life is so hard. It's terrible. America is racist. I mean, that's all we're getting from you. So where does the joy come in? But, you know, th- these are the same people that would point to um, it, the, the joy of, quote unquote, Elliot Page. Uh, and meanwhile, you're looking and you just see nothing but pure misery. And yet we're supposed to see that as joy. So similar situation here. All right, let's talk about your metabolism. You know, that thing that determines whether you're burning fat or just storing it. Now, I'm not one for fad diets or miracle cures, but I am interested in real solutions that actually work, and that's why I want to tell you about Lumen. Lumen is not some gimmicky weight loss scheme. It's a serious tool for understanding and improving your uh, metabolic health. Let me tell you, in today's world of processed foods and sedentary lifestyles, we could use a little help in that department. Here's how it works. You breathe into this device first thing in the morning, and it tells you if you're burning fat or carbs. It's that simple, but it doesn't stop there. Lumen gives you a personalized nutrition pl- nutrition plan for the day based on your measurements. You can even use it before and after workouts and meals to know exactly what's going into your body in real time. Now, why does this matter? Because your metabolism is your body's engine. It's how you turn food into fuel. And when your uh, metabolic health is optimal, you get a bunch of benefits, easier weight management, improved energy levels, better fitness results, even better sleep. Who doesn't want that? And for the ladies out there, Lumen even tracks your cycle and adjusts for menopause gives you recommendations to keep your meta, uh, metabolism healthy throughout those hormonal shifts so you can keep your energy up and fight off those cravings because apparently the hormones affect more than just your mood. Who knew? So if you want to take the next step in improving your health, go to lumen.me slash Walsh to get 15% off uh, your Lumen. That's L-U-M-E-N dot me slash Walsh for 15% off your purchase. Thank you, Lumen, for sponsoring this episode. She also was asked about reparations, and uh, let's hear what she has to say about that. Last month, you eulogized Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. Uh, Jackson Lee's signature bill, uh, one of a few, was H.R. 40, which would create a commission to study the history of U.S. slavery Mm -hmm. and study the issue of reparations. She introduced H.R. 40 every session of Congress, taking up the mantle from Congressman John Conyers. Uh, this is a bill that you have co-sponsored as a U.S. Senator. Mm-hmm. Yet, this has, despite the fact that this has been, cer- similar commissions have been uh, created on the state level and on the local level, is yet to pass in Congress, let alone come out of committee. 
Congresswoman Jackson Lee, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, and other advocates have called for President Biden to take executive action to, to, take, to create this commission. Would you, as president, take executive action to create this commission, or do you believe that it should happen in Congress? Well, first of all, I just, as you mentioned, Sheila Jackson Lee, she was an extraordinary leader who we just recently lost, and, um, and she was a friend and um, a real champion for so many issues. So I feel compelled to say that about her. On the issue of um, what we need to do going forward, look, it, first of all, we just need to speak truth about history in spite of the fact that some people would try and erase history and try and teach our children otherwise. We need to speak truth about the generational impact of our history in terms of the generational impact of slavery, the generational impact of, of, of redlining, of Jim Crow law, I could go on and on and on. These are facts that have had impact. Um, and we need, to, we need to speak truth about it. And we need to speak truth about it in a way that is about deriving solutions. And Frankly, I think that we, you know, and part of that is, is studying it to figure out exactly what we need to do. But part of what we can do right now is, for example, what I'm talking about in terms of building an opportunity economy. Um, so there's no answer there. And uh, she, she, she doesn't answer the question. It goes on and on. It goes on for another minute or two. And uh, there's no answer to the question. She uh, rambles on. And the answer is that she does support reparations. Like, that's the actual answer. She has been clear about that in the past. But she's not going to come out and say that now uh, because she knows how unpopular it is, rightfully so. So we're not going to get the actual support for reparations from her right now. Um, and instead, we get this, this whole bit about how we have to be honest about our history and teach our real history. Because, of course, that, that's coming from this idea that uh, somehow we're not talking enough about slavery and kids aren't being taught about slavery in school. This, this, is, the, this is the fantasy world that these people live in, right? On the left, this is the, this is the fantasy world they're living in where somehow kids are not being taught about slavery and there, there, there are people out there who want to stop those kinds of conversations from happening. It's, that's like one of the only facts about American history that the average student even knows. Okay? The average student knows like three things about slavery, about American history, and slavery is two of them. Um, so how much more can we talk about it? I mean, we, I, we, we, we've talked about it about as much as you possibly can. There's as much focus on it in school as there could possibly be. And as you know, I've said many times, uh, I actually think there should be more conversation about slavery. Uh, I, I just want to expand it. We've covered American slavery. Okay, that's part of our history. Yeah, they, we should teach it. Kids should learn about it. Uh, I'd like to expand it and talk about the reality of slavery all across the globe. Uh, the fact that slavery was a reality all across the globe to begin with is something that we should be talking about. Um, and that's not what aboutism or an effort to minimize the horrors of the kind of slavery we had in this country, but more just the historical reality. And if you want to understand anything about human civilization, like these are things you have to know. The fact that slavery was an institution all across the world for thousands of years is uh, one of those crucial facts about human civilization and the development of human civilization that uh, you just have to know if you want to understand anything about human civilization, and thus, uh, you, and therefore, yourself. Understand anything about yourself. Um, so that's what I'd like to see. But all of that, of course, is irrelevant to the question of whether or not there should be reparations, which she's not going to say right now, but yes, she does support it. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out The Matt Walsh Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.